My name is Alan Abbey with this special election night webinar um, about the 2015 Israeli elections. I'm here tonight with Daniil Hartman, the president of the Shalom Hartman Institute, and Yossi Klein Halevi, a uh, senior fellow and researcher at the Institute, both of whom I suspect most of you in the audience know. We're very excited because this is truly a global program tonight. There are websites from Australia through Canada and across the United States carrying it as well as on the Hartman website. There are numerous Jewish day schools throughout North America watching the program. And we're also tonight on directly on our YouTube channel. And finally, and certainly not last but not least, JBS TV, a North American cable network, is carrying this program live as well across their network. The polls in Israel close in 30 minutes after a short but very intense campaign. At 10 o'clock, we are going to be able to give you exit poll results, which we hope and expect will be accurate. It won't tell us actually who won the election other than which parties received the most votes because after that there will be building of coalition. And for those of you uh, to whom this is new, we'll explain some of that. And there will also be an opportunity for audience members online to ask us questions of, uh, of our panel. They're on the Hartman website. There is a live chat module where you can actually type in questions and chat with each other, send notes in class, as it were, to the students. I would say don't do that all the time, maybe just tonight. And on our Twitter channel as well, we'll try and get in as many audience questions as possible. We actually have many questions already in advance. So I want to quickly go into the details of tonight's program and talk about what actually happened and what did we learn uh, during this campaign here in Israel in the last two months. Um, Daniil, I'd like to ask you, in fact, what did we learn about the state of Israeli society, the nature of the mood of the country during this campaign? We learned this campaign was one of the most interesting campaigns that I've witnessed since living in Israel in 1971. It was also um, one of the most troubling and difficult campaigns. Um, and certain levels of it were also quite exhilarating. Um, we learned a few things. Um, we learned that Israeli society is more deeply divided on how it understands the nature of our democracy and the nature of the relationship between a Jewish and democratic state than it is divided on economic issues, then it is divided on Iran, and that it is even divided on foreign policy. Um, foreign policy was almost not even mentioned. It was peripheral. It came in from time to time. Um, there was a sense where, who do you trust? Um, but there was no substantive, really, there wasn't an extensive substantive discussion. And we saw in the polls that that was actually an issue that Israelis ranked quite low on um, as, as, as what was going to affect um, their, their final vote with, with inner economic issues um, and, um, and social justice issues far higher up um, uh, um, on, their, on their concerns. But, but you saw here almost, I would say, two different visions of Israel, um, two different stories about who we are. Uh, one um, spoke very, very much in terms of us versus them, um, fear, um, fear <coughs> of the outside world, um, fear of minorities, uh, fear of losing identity, um, where democracy was, and, and fundamental values of equality and, and moral standards were just, they were, it was very comfortable trumping them, or not, not trumping, removing them from the conversation. And um, you saw here, I, in this election, uh, conversations about Israel, which, from my perspective, were horrific. And I haven't seen, um, in Israeli political discourse, these types of conversations or the legitimacy of these type of statements um, since 1971. Um, and, and again, on the other hand, you saw a different story about Israel. And it wasn't, and it wasn't as if the other side even took the, the, the more xenophobic, and I would even say racist, and in some cases um, nationalist, um, overt nationalist conversation. They, were, they weren't even debated. The other conversation didn't speak about them. They chose to concentrate on 
issues of economic um, uh, improvement, um, hope, or other things, but um, we're facing an election in which the, the core identity of Israel, in my mind, the core identity of Israel is up for question. Yossi, were you as troubled as Daniel seems to be by the fact that not only were these <coughs> core issues raised, in a sense, as Daniel is saying, they weren't even discussed? Look, my, my frame of reference uh, with uh, the Israeli uh, elections begins in 1981. That was the first election I covered as a journalist. And that was a brutal time. Uh, it was Israel's most violent election. Uh, left and right were, uh, were literally uh, uh, shouting at each other on the streets. Uh, there, there were violent attacks by Likud activists against labor activists. Labor campaign headquarters was, was set on fire. Uh, it was Menachem Begin versus Shimon Peres, and the issues were ideological. It was, it was a passionate tearing ourselves apart over settlements, uh, over, over relations with the United States, uh, over uh, the, the attack against uh, the nuclear reactor in Iraq. Uh, this election, for all of the nasty rhetoric, uh, uh, was really, the, the nastiness was confined, I found, more on the personal level. It's, it's, it's us or it's him. It's the Likud or it's them. This trying to, to paint this light versus darkness uh, dichotomy. It was in the political, I, I, I agree. It, mm. the, 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 the street was very, very calm. Very calm. Very calm. And mm -hmm. I'm always surprised whenever I go to Israeli, yeah. whenever I vote in Israel, which is one of the, my most exciting, it's, I love voting in Israel. Um, when Daniel, I flew back today, to vote, to vote. literally today, <laughs> to vote. <laughs> to vote. It's just, it's, it's just. It's, and the plane was packed it's just, it's with a people unit. who were coming back. It's one vote. of the most beautiful, but it's yeah. the, 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 the peacefulness. Mm -hmm. You'd think that they're, they're, the politicians, the rhetoric, the language of the politicians setting forth visions of Israel um, is what scared me. Yeah. Um, because these are politicians who are afterwards going to be sitting in the Knesset. These are politicians who are going to be ministers of justice, mm -hmm. um, ministers of finance. They're going to be sitting on committees. Right. Um, and so, the, you're right. The, you didn't feel a bifurcated Israeli society. No. No. And I think you're correct. I, I accept that point. I think you're absolutely correct. But the politicians are presenting very starkly different visions mm -hmm. of the Israel that we're going to have. And which coalition we're going to get is going to be shaped more by what the politicians are speaking about now than by the core concerns of, uh, or lack of concerns, or quiet and right. uh, of the population. Well, well, were the politicians then disconnected from what is actually the feeling in the country? If the politicians are raising these issues, but the people's concerns were different, that's a significant disconnect. I don't know if the people's concerns are different, but they're, they're not as vociferous, and they're not, they're not marching on the barricades to the same extent. You know, the two biggest demonstrations had, what, 20,000 people? It was, it was um, uh, right. you, there, I think Israeli society, and part of what we've seen in this election is, um, is that we're a very tribal community. And um, there are certain shifts that have taken place. Um, I think the Likud has ceased to be a center party. Um, and Kahlon and Yesh Atid and their success um, is, is a result of, of um, I think, the, you, Likud and Baita Yehudi and a very large number of, I think half of the Likud party could have run in the, um, could have been members of Baita Yehudi, in fact, and their religious Zionists as well. Um, so I think you have a, a significant body who is right. I think you have um, a, a, a new center. I think there is a, a core center which has left the Likud. Um, they left labor a long time ago, um, but they've also left the Likud. Um, and, uh, and so there, th I think there's a, 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 a shift of maybe 10 seats or so here, there, um, but the blocks are there and therefore th the, the level of the argument in society is not as compelling because I think people are more or less, um, are you going to vote Likud or not? Um, Kahlon and Yeshatid could go up or down. Um, are you going to be Haredi? Are you in the far left? Do you belong to the Israeli Arab population? So there, I think there wasn't as much anger because the, the tribes are clear. Um, and uh, it's remarkable how from the first day that the election um, was announced, there's been a minor, minor shift only 
in Likud labor um, uh, um, mm. uh, returns. I think the other the shifts have been have been taking place um, more in the center and where you align yourself in the center. So um, I think the population, on that sense, is more knows who they are, and I think. A lot of what the party elector um, uh, campaigning was to solidify their group. So I think, for example, uh, Netanyahu said, what do I need to do to get my 25 seats? I'm not even trying to get the other 20 seats. I'm not going to get, I need, my, this campaign is between 21 to 25. If I get to 25, I win. Mm -hmm. I win. And so he spoke to that group, and I think he spoke very often to the worst of that group. I think Bennett spoke to the worst of what the religious Zionist community is about. Um, because he has certain core people and he's trying to fight to make sure that he has his space. And I think you saw a lot of that. And that, so it's not that they weren't speaking um, to what the society is about, but they were speaking, to, I would say, to the worst of what their tribes stand for. They were looking to support and build up their bases, but they didn't feel like they could reach out of those bases to anybody else because things are kind of yeah. set. By Jehudi tried. With its um, with its soccer player um, and look and it, it, they were the only it didn't ones. Work. It, it didn't work. It didn't work. What was um, Ohana? You know, and he could be. He's a great. You know, he's a serious guy. Ohana's not a lie. He's a serious guy. But they try. At one point, by Judy tried to be Likud, mm -hmm. um, and um, and very quickly his base said, <laughs> "You want to be Likud? You're going to lose us. You know, good luck to you." Yossi, do you feel the, the bases, the, 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 the tribes, as it were, the tribes of Israel here are really set and that there isn't a lot of movement? Or do you think we will, in fact, be surprised? In a I think of that one of the, the significant outcomes uh, of the last few elections, and it's been solidified in this election, is the permanence of the center. Correct. The center is not a, a passing phenomenon. That's right. And uh, we've seen the rise and fall and rise of, uh, of centrist parties. Each successively fails, and then is immediately followed by a new party, which astonishingly gets a tremendous amount of public support. Now, I find the, 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 um, the, 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 the comeback of Yesh Atid in this election to be very significant. Yesh Atid, by all measures, was, if not a failed party, certainly not a successful party. Uh, for all kinds of reasons. They were amateurs. They, they had a crowded agenda. Uh, they didn't succeed in, 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 in really fulfilling anywhere near of their promise. And yet they've managed to convince a substantial part of the electorate to give them another chance, mm. precisely because they're speaking a language that many Israelis are hungry Absolutely for. Absolutely correct. We need a language that takes us past 40 years of the ideological left versus the ideological right, which most Israelis feel is a sterile debate. And, and it's, it's interesting, you know, I, I, I was reading The Economist on the plane over on how they're analyzing the election, and it's all about the peace process. Mm -hmm. And as Daniel said, this election was not about the peace process, and not, it's not because Israelis don't care about peace. That is one of the, the simplistic notions prevalent in, in a large part of, of media coverage of Israeli society. I think it's because a majority of Israelis have listened carefully for years to the arguments between the left and the right, and realized that, uh, that they agree with the left about, about peace. If there's a chance for, for a genuine peace, we will go for a deal. And if there isn't a chance, and most Israelis believe there isn't anytime soon, then uh, let's, let's debate issues, let's try to resolve issues that, uh, that we've been deferring for years, which brings us to the domestic agenda. So it really is the triumph of the, the centrist sensibility and, uh, and, and we're now we're seeing Kahlon, the, 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 the rise of Kahlon, I think is significant in that Yesh Atid came out of the center left or created a center left. Kahlon has now created a center right. Now, and it's interesting that even Kahlon was very careful not to say that he's going to go only with the Likud. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And so absolutely. there is, there is I, I would say that if you look at the Likud party itself and who they've elected, these are, this is, Netanyahu is the far left in the Likud party. He's the one who, at least in theory, sometimes says he's for a two-state solution. Well, now, he's, now he's negated that. I know, but it's like, and, but, and he'll, and he'll negate that too. How's he going to walk that back? No, no, it's, 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 it's but, no. but the other people have negated it. His party is filled. Yes. Half, sep, half of the first 10 are against it. You're talking a party which has given up completely. Not one which says the nuance that you mentioned, which says that, you know what, now 
I don't think it's realistic, but I want to make sure that as a society, I'm available, I'm open to, to a deal if that deal becomes politically possible and even politically necessary. Um, Bayit HaYehudi and the Likud party today have made that impossible. And I think both Kahlon and Yesh Atid, which, you know, and it's like we almost have three blocks here, mm-hmm. um, but you then have Kahlon, Yesh Atid, and um, the Machane Hatzion, and the, the, Machan, the Zionist Union. Um, this, you have a significant block who want to keep the conversation at least still going. Mm-hmm. Um, or, so it's, uh, th- they don't want us, they don't want to tip, and I think Likud has tipped over, and that's why it's nowhere near, it can't go above even it's why, you know, I don't want to yeah, project. No, no, it's I not going anywhere right. above 25 no, seats. No, no, for just sure not. It can't be and there this anymore. Is, I think this is a historic failure of Netanyahu, uh, and it's a negation of what he himself set out to achieve uh, with his Bar Ilan speech, That's supporting correct. a two-state solution. He was aiming to become the leader of the center-right. Mm-hmm. That's correct. And in this election, he forfeited that role definitively. How do you fit the, the big Iran speech to the Congress in the middle of that, which was such a storm, mostly in the United States, and kind of a, uh, a passing thought here in some ways in Israel. It didn't seem to affect the results because of these very issues that you've been talking about. It was so big, and for folks in North America particularly who are watching this and we're seeing all the coverage when our prime minister spoke to your Congress in a way that angered your president, it became such a big thing. But did see, it, once he's it given disappeared? Up, but once he gave up the center, mm-hmm. see, his speech was playing to his 25 seats. That's how he, the whole election gets, for Netanyahu is narrowed down to one place. If I get 25, I'm the next I, prime I, minister. I, I, I don't think Iran fit into that calculation. No. I think for Iran, uh, this was his rock bottom commitment. This is the issue that defined him as a leader since the 1990s. And, um, and it was interesting the way the Israeli public responded to him. Which is almost... But yeah, Yossi, you know, but how, how Yossi you, I agree with you. Music? Again, I agree 100% that this is a real issue for Netanyahu. He's not politicking on this right. issue. But why do it two weeks before? Now, this, he could have done it or early or later. He could have done it in a different way. The, the snubbing of an American <sighs> president. You see, there were other things to this conversation, oh. Yossi, which go way beyond the Iranian issue. You could, you know, even if you care about Iran, the argument is at least plausible and I think quite compelling that, um, that he undermined Israel's position. But even if you don't agree with that and your issue is Iran, there is no reason to do it in such a way that shows you fighting um, and aligning yourself in one way um, and with one, um, with, with, one, with, with one political party and in many ways fighting with the American president. That fight plays perfectly um, to his 25. The more, um, the more macho I am, the more I show that it's us, them, the more I live in a world which says that I don't care, I'm gonna, that's, that's his core that's his base. Core. And he, 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 as you said, he gave up the center. Now, I'm not debating what, 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 whether the deal is right or wrong, and I'm not debating, and I agree. Not only am I not debating, I even agree that for Netanyahu, this is a core issue. But I think the way he handled this core issue went beyond core issues and played very well to his persona now um, in the right. And as long as he gets his 25, he feels that he won. Look, no politician uh, makes such a decisive move without some political considerations. But, if, but the balance here, I think, was, was overwhelmingly in what Netanyahu perceives, and I think correctly, as, the, as a national existential issue. And uh, in terms of the timing, in terms of, uh, of how we went about this, uh, the sense of, of the impending deadline with uh, the negotiations at the end of March, I think was, uh, was really decisive here. Uh, but where I do fault Netanyahu is that uh, if you believe that Iran is the defining existential issue of this generation, then make sure that your agenda is clear. Make sure that you're not carrying baggage that will undermine your credibility on Iran, which is to say he should have from the beginning insisted on a settlement freeze at, at, at least outside the blocks, which would have made clear 
that, uh, that, that he is focused on, on Iran and is willing to pay a price on his own domestic issues to, uh, to shore up his credibility on Iran. That's where I think he failed. The fact that he went at, at the last moment and, and broke all the rules and, and placed this on the international agenda and got the whole world arguing for the first time in a serious way mm -hmm. about the deal, that I think was necessary and I think that was a success. But what we're looking at is, is, is a more systemic failure uh, in, in, in his leadership. But at the risk of uh, truly damaging or Israel's relations both with the American government and with the American Jewish community at the very least or with the American public at large, isn't, there, isn't that also a calculation that has to be part Absolutely. of the strategic Absolutely. military piece? Because without Absolutely. that support. So, and, and did that in fact, you, you just said you came back from uh, the United States. By the way, the reason Yossi came back was not just to be on the show tonight, but to vote. And as he said, many Israelis were because there's no absentee balloting in Israel except for a few modest exceptions. So thousands of Israelis do come home. Oh, the person to next vote. to me on the plane and was coming back so, just to vote. So, so anyway, I just wanted to make sure our, some of our viewers who may not know that. And I think that says, Israeli I think system. this goes back to what Danielle was saying earlier. This shows something of the vitality. Of, uh, of Israeli society and this, this deep sense of personal commitment and responsibility that, uh, that people here have. And we'll come back to that, but uh, to make the point of, of, of saying this in a way that puts the American-Israeli relationship at risk. You were, in, you were both at the APAC conference. You've both been in America a lot recently. Did Netanyahu's speech and the talk about it cause any real harm? Many of our questioners, from, particularly from our North American audience, have asked that. Did that speech create real risk or was that not going to really be uh, an ongoing problem beyond the confines of the speech itself? Um, I don't feel that it's going, that it's, it's an irreparable um, damage. Um, but, uh, and I think, I think the more critical issue is, um, is, is, the, is, is the posturing and the positioning of an Israeli leader vis-a-vis -vis the United States. Mm. Um, and it goes way beyond the speech. And I think as that's why I'm going back again to there is a group of people, you know, or like you, if you saw today, the streets were plastered with Baita Yehudi ads. Um, we don't need to <coughs> apologize anymore. I think that was like, we don't want to apologize no, anymore. So there are a group of, of people in Israel um, for whom um, th their world fits very much into, I would say, a, a post-Holocaust consciousness in which um, uh, the state of Israel is, is there free at last, free at last. <laughs> um, oh my God, I'm free from having to worry about what the Goyim think about me and I'm gonna get up because they hate me anyway and I'm going to go and I'm going to do what I think I need to do and I live by myself and, and that type of consciousness, I think it, it plays very well for um, not for the center and not for the left. In a moment, we have to speak also about, um, about the joint Arab list, and it certainly doesn't speak um, and create an Israel, which Israeli Arabs would want in any way be a part of. But, and I think it, that the posturing, I would say, the persona of, of Netanyahu and, um, and Bennett, um, and there's a very similar dimension to their posturing, um, is one that is, that in the long run is gonna be deeply difficult um, for a North American Jew who, 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 who feels embraced by America, who feels embraced by the world, who wants to live in the midst of the world, and who wants to feel that we protect ourselves and we stand up for ourselves, but we're not into fighting with that world and we're not into sticking your, we're not, into, we're not beyond apologizing. You know? That's not, who said, well, since, when does a, since when does a religious party say we don't have to apologize mm. when one of the core values of our tradition is to you can't be a Jew unless you apologize for the things that you've done wrong. Like what I'm beyond apologizing, but it's like I'm perfect. So there is that, the problem is in that posturing. And so um, it's in the long run, I think that will be much more difficult whether, and I think that goes way beyond the speech because I think the speech um, had some positive dimensions that, Yo that Yossi spoke about. It had some negative ones. There's less support in Congress now than there was before. Um, and uh, um, so it's not the speech. It's what is the persona of Israel? What's our relationship with the world? Um, and how Netanyahu makes sure that, you know, Bennett will get his 12, 10 to 12 seats. Netanyahu wants to be prime minister. Um, as prime minister, you have to relate to the world. And how does he step back 
from his campaign posture to actually begin to embrace all of Israeli society and the world is, um, is going to take uh, a lot of work on his part. And his party is not prepared for it. I think the, the dilemma of, uh, of Iran uh, places us in a position where we have to choose between two essential uh, Zionist commitments. One is to, um, to, re to restore our ability to defend ourselves, and the other is to return us to the international community. And, uh, and on, on this specific issue, we find one value against the other. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so when, uh, when Netanyahu went head to head against Obama, and as, as Daniel, as you put it, uh, poked, his, poked Obama's eye, uh, that was a classic example of weighing one value against the other. Mm -hmm. And on that issue, I personally agree with him. I think that if we're serious, that Iran, a nuclear Iran, is, um, is, is simply a situation that we cannot live with, and I deeply believe that, and I don't think it's only us, I think it's the Middle East as a whole, then, uh, then this, is, this is the moment to, um, to risk even our relationship with the United States, and even our relationship with parts of American Jewry. If this, if this is the moment which will determine whether we will be able to effectively defend ourselves in the Middle East, then this is the moment to break the rules. It's, it's nearly 10 o'clock. We're going to uh, hopefully wow. have Mitzvah exit poll results in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel the, uh, he's feeling yeah. a little uh, excited and nervous here. Um, so we'll, uh, as the ex exit poll results are being announced on the Israeli television networks, we're going to be uh, cutting away in a minute to a reporter we have out um, at the uh, Yer Lapid headquarters, actually, uh, to uh, give us the results. And uh, we will also be able to, I think, show you those results on our screens, on your screens in a, in a couple of minutes. So in the next minute or two, um, Danielle, this is a question you suggested, perhaps, that I asked you the other day. I'm not going to ask you who's going to win, because in a minute we'll know at least what the numbers are. But you uh, suggested that you had a dream team in mind for the next uh, government, and if we have a minute or two, maybe you can, uh, if you're willing to give us that, I'd love to hear if you're willing, what you think is the dream team that will address the larger issues that you've been talking, and also the ground, the details of the ground issues, such as economic uh, details and policies. Um, I don't want to get completely specific about my whole dream team, even though my politics um, on the center-left are, are known, um, and therefore who, um, who I would like to win is quite clear. Um, I would say that one of the things that we have to be very careful for in either way is an election or a coalition which doesn't take into account the complexity of Israel. Mm. I think Israelis, the system in Israel is not broken. Israelis love having multiple parties because we feel that the issues mm. are really complicated. They're really complicated. Um, Yossi feels this about Iran. I also feel about Iran, but for me it's issue number five. For Yossi it's issue number one. Now, we all want to have different parties, which, which, which I want you to have this policy on social justice and on housing, and I want you to be here on, on relationships to North America. So I think the system itself, and I think a future coalition, I think Haredim need to be in the coalition. I would love a day in which Arabs could be in the coalition. The thing, my dream team is mm. one where, there, where it is a, it is a center, center left coalition, but which is open to um, um, the multiple voices so that we could really govern, not, a, not govern through power, but govern through representation, in which different tribes stop seeing themselves as being dis disenfranchised, just waiting for the next election so that they can get back at somebody. And I think the cheap victories mm -hmm. of, defran of defranchising people of the last election um, and some of the phony issues, I would hope um, for a center, center left coalition, but which goes beyond um, the, the pure, and I would love to see Shas in the coalition. I think, it's, I think Haredim are a major part of Israeli society. They belong in a coalition. And if that means repealing the legislation of um, that not serving in the army puts you in jail, that the criminal, repeal it. That's not our big issue. I would love to see a coalition in which some members of the Arab party um, could, could feel that, yes, we now have a space, we are able to come in, and, and, and just like Haredim find a way to be in and not be in completely, um, 
um, if they're not co able to be completely. And Israeli society needs to heal itself um, and needs to have a representative government. My nightmare hmm. is, uh, is uh, a very far right-wing coalition, which will be um, uh, a Likud, Bayit Yehudi, Yisrael Beitenu, um, United Torah Judaism, Shas Yachad Party, um, which I think will be um, uh, profoundly dangerous for Israel, not to speak of Israel's relationship with the world and with world Jewry. Yossi, uh, something you wrote just recently made a very interesting point. You said that um, it seemed that the Haredim who, to bring Haredim into Israeli society, they shouldn't be in the government, but they probably would, and that Israeli Arabs uh, pr who would also need to be brought into Israeli society would be out of the government, and you kind of saw it the, the, the two sides, uh, the worst of both of those possibilities happening mm -hmm. in the government uh, in, in the government to come. Um, is that in fact what you think is going to happen? Do you? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's so interesting for me listening to, to Daniel because I'm center right, Daniel center left. And the two of us can have a conversation that's very much on the, con on the continuum. Uh, but the, 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 fine, the, the <laughs> fine points are, are, are debatable. And so, um, Listening to Daniel's uh, idea of, of bringing the Haredim in uh, and, and the Arab Israelis, uh, I, I agree with him, but it's a question of timing. I think that, that in order for the ultra-Orthodox to be brought in to the Israeli mainstream, their parties need to be excluded from at least one more coalition mm. government, as they were from the previous one, to complete the process of forcing large numbers of, uh, of young Haredim uh, into either the army or alternative service. Uh, and I think that that can only happen, uh, unfortunately, through coercion. We will not get uh, all or even most ultra-Orthodox young men into uniform, but I think we can get a substantial, uh, a substantial part of the community there. And that's essential, from my point of view, to, to mainstreaming the community. With the, Arab, with, with, with the Arab Israelis, the Palestinian Israelis, and imagine the dilemma of having an identity of being a Palestinian Israeli, uh, there, uh, I think the dynamic is exactly the opposite. We, mm. need, we need Palestinian Israelis to be part of, uh, of, the, of the political system. Uh, we, need, we need to embrace them. The problem is that the ambivalence on the part of, uh, of, the, of the Jewish political system is shared by the ambivalence of, of most uh, of the Arab mm. politicians. The problem is not only, it is on our side, but not only. And, uh, and if you look at, at the, the parties that Arab Israelis have, 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 have sent to represent them, you have nationalist parties, you have an Islamist party, you have what once was a communist party and, and, and still bears strong traces of, 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 of that ideology. What you're really lacking is a credible integrationist party, a party that places civil rights at the top of its agenda. And if you look at the polls, there was just recently a poll was mm -hmm. taken of Arab Israelis, the strong majority want precisely that. They want an Arab-Israeli politics that will promote their integration. 65% the really that that? say that they are proud to be Israeli. Yes, six, that's proud right. to be Israeli. And that, that's uh, improving. That's a better, uh, if there's any history of that, is that a better That is than one of seen? the higher. Yes. It dipped for a while, yes. and now it dipped back up. Yes. And uh, um, I think um, Israelis have to start seeing, seeing the fact that we have 21% minority in this country. And you have to see your minority, and you have to give them a place at the table. And uh, inshallah, we could do that. Um, it's going to take a lot of courage. Um, I think it will happen far more quickly with a center-left um, coalition um, than with a center-right coalition. And, and uh, hopefully in a minute or so, we will actually know if we're going to have the opportunity to create a center-left or center-right coalition. Um, um, <coughs> as, the, as we've passed 10 o'clock, uh, I see everybody here is kind of uh, waiting for that, and um, wait. We have results. We have results. Really? Okay. Wow. Um, I'm going to read them to you. Uh, I thought we'd have a slide. Uh, we'll have a slide in in a few in a few seconds. The number one party. Uh, this is according to Channel Two. Okay, we're about to be able to get. 
a live report from the field from veteran uh, Israeli journalist Eli Wogelerter, who's at the uh, Yeshatid headquarters and will give us these results. Uh, and uh, hopefully, again, you'll see them on your screen, everybody. Eli uh, Wogelerter, are you with us? I am. I can hear you, Alan. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Alan? Yes, Ellie. Please tell me what the results are. All right. Uh, yes, as you said, Likud uh, is in the front on Channel 2 with 28 seats. Zionist Union has 27. But in the other two polls, Channel 10 and Channel 1, both parties are at 27. So we are basically in a statistical tie, and of course we'll have further results in the middle of the night uh, to tell us exactly how many seats. But it's that close uh, count by all three channels is a good indication that it's probably the way it's going to stay. An hour ago, I was hearing uh, there was a wide discrepancy among the three channels, some having them tied, some having a five-seat difference. But the final results now at 10 o'clock shows that they are so close, and it is virtually a tie between the two major parties. Uh, the Yesha Tid party of, of uh, Napoli Bennett uh, scoring lower, or about, about what the pre-election polls had them at, uh, channel 2 and Channel 1 has them at 12. Channel 10 has them at 11. The Arab list, uh, about what was expected, 13 and 13 seats for Channel 2 and Channel 10 and 12 seats for Channel 1. Uh, IHUD, I'm sorry, I said Yesha did under Naftali Bennett. I meant, obviously, Yesha did under Yair Lapid. IHUD under Naftali Bennett, a major disappointment. Eight seats for Channel 2 and Channel 10 and nine seats for Channel 1. Uh, Kulanu, Polling about as high as was expected in the last polls of last Friday. Nine seats for Channel 2, ten seats for Channel 10, and Channel 1. Uh, Aguda, UTJ rather, the combined Orthodox Party, six seats for Channel 2, seven for Channel 10, and six for Channel 1. Shas, seven seats across the board, uh, down from what it has, uh, the 11 it had in the outgoing Knesset. Uh, Yachad, which split from Shas under Eli Yishai, zero seats across the board. In all three polls, uh, Yisrael Beitenu, a big Leibniz party, hurt by scandals, five seats across the board, and Meretz at five seats across the board. And if you're going to ask me which side is going to be able to form a government, at this point, because they are so close, the two main parties, it is going to be a long, drawn-out affair until a coalition is formed in at least, uh, from this point, at least two months until that coalition is formed. Eli Wogelerter reporting in from the Yeshutit headquarters in Tel Aviv. Eli, thank you very much. Uh, uh, once again, uh, everybody, we've been surprised, I think, by the results. The big surprise, as I will just say uh, first, and we'll turn to Daniil and Yossi in a second, is that the two major parties polled much higher themselves. Both of them polled much higher themselves than the pre-election polls had stated, suggesting perhaps that uh, people who might have thought of these smaller parties because of the very specific issues Daniil and Yossi were talking about felt they wanted to strengthen the particular bloc that they support on the bigger issues so that that party would be able to in fact form the next government. If the Zionist Union um, and uh, Likud are at 28 and 27 or 27 and 28 depending on what the final results are, clearly they're just about neck and neck. And that is far higher than each of them had polled in pre-election polls. And with the possible exception of Yesha Teed, uh, everybody else has polled lower than had been expected. So once again, Daniel and Yossi, we have uh, at least the exit poll version of the results. Maybe there'll be a change of a seat or two. Um, but uh, certainly uh, some surprises here. And, and then you all have your charts out, everybody at home uh, doing the math. Let's see what you come up with. Uh, Daniil, I'll give you the first crack at who do you think will create a government? And what does that mean, of course? What does that mean? First of all, one, one of the interesting things, it, it did fit very much into the blocks. Um, the uh, Bait Yehudi, um, which is a core tribal party, um, lost those seats um, which um, didn't belong completely to the tribe and they went right back to the Likud um, creating that parity. And um, the Likud campaign to ensure that it, that it um, if, if Bayit Yehudi had got the 12 seats that everybody was projecting them to have, then uh, Likud would have lost this um, election and I think um, people strategically moved back to the, to the Likud um, for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, we're all trying to do the math and it's really, really close. Um, uh, um, 
Likud Bait Yehudi, together with um, um, the Haredi. The, the only, only way, way the Haredim are not in the next coalition. coalition. Oh, they're in. They're they're in. in. The only way no, that they're, they're in. not in the no next matter, coalition. No matter who forms a government. Well, the only, only way, way that they would not be in would be if there is a national unity government. And, and now national, we're coming to, but to the a, heart of it. But I, with this campaign and with the particular people, I can see Chotobeli and Miri Regev um, sitting with Shelly Yachimovich and um, and um, blank, Stav Shafir. And Stav Shafir. And I, <laughs> I just, I, I don't, I don't think the rhetoric of uh, of the parties themselves um, will. Um, will enable a, a national unity government. I think this number, I think Netanyahu, if he came in at 2120, his political career was over and his party would have killed him. I think his political career is saved. Um, but the, the Haredi parties are right there. Nobody could form a coalition, not only without one, probably without both of the Haredi parties at the same time. Um, and. Um, that would require of Yeshati. That, anyway, that would require for Israel Beitenu to change if it's a, if it's a right party, and it will require Yeshati to give up some of its ideology um, um, if it chooses to build a coalition. Because the Haredim are there, um, Kulanu could be very very proud. Um, there is a um, 21 seats now, clear center, um, 27. Um, center left, 28 Eight center, center right, right. Uh, 36, uh, 36 center, center right, right back, actually. actually. Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, you'll see what you'll see. 27, 28 are just about the 61 needed. Uh, of course, if I would hope everybody knows this, but the Israeli parliament has 120 seats and to form a government, hmm. a party has to be able to build a coalition of at least 61 seats, of course. Uh, generally, uh, people look for a lot more than 61 to uh, strengthen themselves and to make it uh, less difficult for any single small party to threaten to pull out and knock down the government. So uh, 61 is the bare minimum needed legally, but generally we get more. Yossi, 28 and 27, you're almost at 61. Daniil doesn't think they can sit together, but all we've heard is this is really all about, in the end, a coalition government. This is my dream outcome. Your dream outcome. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, in terms of... Uh, we have different dreams. <laughs> we, do. We, 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 we have different tactical dreams okay, that's to, the same, uh, to the same dream. And uh, the, the, in terms of sitting together, certainly the enmity uh, is, is deep, but we've seen uh, worse enmity in the past. Uh, Shimon Peres and Yitzhak Shamir sat together uh, in, uh, in the 1980s uh, in a, in a <laughs> national unity government. It was not a happy affair, but they managed to hold it together for most of the term. Now, now what if I If I could just find, interrupt one second, yeah. you'll see, I'm sorry, but uh, we will be getting to audience questions, but in a sense, we'll give the first comment outside this room to the president of Israel, Ruby Rivlin, who said, in fact, that uh, based on the results, he's already told the media that he will work for a national unity government. And while he cannot, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, he cannot require or demand it, he does carry a lot These of are the results. These are the results. So, so the maybe, maybe when, we'll when, get Whether this. the country actively or consciously wants a unity government, that is, that is the inner logic of, of Israeli politics today. And this is a precise reflection of everything that we were saying before, which is the enmity is more contrived than real. Mm. What unites most Israelis, most Israeli Jews, one needs to emphasize, uh, is, uh, is more powerful than what divides us. My hope for a, uh, in terms of policy for a unity government is that um, Netanyahu, will cede uh, um, social issues to, uh, to, to the center and the center left. He has no choice. I think no matter, no matter what government would have been formed, uh, social, the social agenda will be front and center. Uh, and, uh, and also to uh, agree to free settlement building outside the blocks, which will eliminate bringing in uh, Bennett, the, the Jewish Home Party. And, uh, and on the other side, uh, mm. the, left, the left will cede Iran to Netanyahu. This, Netanyahu has been given one last chance to, to make good on his commitment to, uh, 
to, to focusing all of his energies on Iran. He will have to pay the price uh, with settlements. Hmm. Uh, the, the, my hope is that tomorrow morning we will see the emergence of a de facto bloc of uh, Yeshatid and Kulano, 21 seats, where they will tell the two blocs, uh, we want a unity government. Uh, I'll say it in Hebrew and I'll translate. Beli kitsonim uveli charedim. Without extremists and without the ultra-Orthodox. Yeshatid will have a very difficult time sitting in a coalition with the ultra-Orthodox because their only real achievement in the last government was passing the, uh, the draft law. And, uh, and the price that, uh, that, that any government would have to pay for bringing the ultra-Orthodox in, and you said this, would be having to give up the draft law. Yeshatid cannot give up the draft law for their own, for, for, for their, for their own integrity. Mm. Uh, in terms of, uh, of, uh, of what a government means without the ultra-Orthodox, without the extremists, by the extremists I mean the hard, the hard right, which is Bennett, and the hard left, which is, which is Merritt. Okay, Neil, is this do, actually what's going to happen? I don't know. Um, let's just look, let's just summarize the numbers for yes, a second. Um, Likud could put together a coalition of 63 with Likud, Bait, Yehudi, Yisrael, Beitenu, um, United Torah, Judaism, and Shas, um, a far-right party with Kulanu as their moderating force, they get 63. Um, um, Zionist Union, Yeshatid, Yisrael Beitenu, Kulanu, and one Haredi party, Shas, Shas, presumably, would give them 60 seats. And with support from um, some of the Arab, they could, they're almost, in other words, they don't even need both Haredi parties. Mm -hmm. Would Kulanu be willing to sit? In other words, the only way that, 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 that Likud gets to avoid a national coalition government, because I don't believe Yeshatid is going to go in with Likud by itself. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to join, even with Kulanu, but they're not going to, I think his campaign was such that I don't think he's going to repeat the same place that he, that he the same position that he did in the past. Um, that uh, um, you have a very far right wing government with Kulanu as their fig leaf, or you have a Zionist union, Yeshatid, with one Haredi party in it. Which, like only go, which only gives us 60. 60. I know, I'm praying for one slight shift in the... Uh, in the <laughs> final outcome? I'm, listen, I'm a, listen, Jews prayed for next year in Jerusalem for 2,000 years. Um, I, <laughs> I'm missing just one seat. Well, um, but either way, in other mm. words, it's, it's doable. I'm not sure that they're going to do if it. You so don't have, if you don't have a, a straight majority for what are called here the Zionist parties with the Haredim, if, if labor can only pull off 60, and is dependent on uh, one on the, Arab, party. on the Arab list. Is or merits, actually. If they put merits in, then they have 65. I'm just not sure that merits and Yisrael, the truth is you can choose merits or Yisrael Beitenu. It's to the get same to number. the 60. If you, get, if you add merits the two, in, the two will you're at 60. Together. I understand yeah. that, but uh, there's, uh, um, that's why I was, it's. Uh, it's 60. The way it's 60 it, the way it either way. Now, it's 60. It's 60, and. Uh, and Likud and has 63. Kulanu will not sit in, 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 in a minority uh, Jewish government that is dependent on, uh, on the Arab party, which includes figures like Hanan Zuabi, Ahmad Tibi, who are not palatable, uh, first to the Kulanu voters, that's for sure, uh, and, I, and I think to, um, to Kahlon as well. The news is a little better for, um, for the Likud than for the Zionist Union. Mm -hmm. um, but both of them, um, and when I look at the nature, and I would ask, would Netanyahu want to lead a government like this? Um, on one hand, he campaigned for a government like this. Um, would he want to live with that? Could Israel live with this? Where, because um, I don't believe Kulanu is um, primarily, and I don't think Kahlon um, is primarily a foreign policy issue person. Um, he does this, have Michael this, Orr in the former ambassador. He has, that's his one as, voice as his there. Foreign um, policy it's, voice. Uh, this, and, and, and uh, Norwood, by the way, half of Kulanu people, um, Rachel Azariah, she would not sit there. Now, this is, I don't this actually, is not a government this, that Kulanu would feel comfortable this is not a, in. So yeah. the reality is, is that neither of them can do it. Could do it. 
It's a unity government. Right. So that, right now, that well, let's call it a disunity government. <laughs> but that's really what, uh, what, what, what seems correct. to be the logic of this. Because I cannot see half of Kulanu sitting with Yisrael Beitenu and Baidu in this coalition. Mm -hmm. um, they would not do it either. If, if that's the case then, if uh, the uh, smaller parties will not go into a unity government, but there's been so much, as you mentioned not earlier... Not that they won't go into a unity, they won't go into... I'm sorry, a, 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 a Likud... A clearly led, left, right, a center-center right, left with right, a lot of left, right. and, a, and, a, and a center-right with a lot so, of right. So in a sense, they would only fit in a unity government. That's, uh, the, um, the numbers are speaking. Um, neither government, um, neither party could form a coalition. Right. And the question is really what Danielle raised before, which is whether our politicians are big enough to manage uh, sitting together. Right. Do you have an answer to that? Uh, they don't have a choice. I don't think they, they don't have, have a choice. choice but, but will we find ourselves in another dysfunctional situation where a year or two down the line we'll, 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 we'll see new, new elections. The problem is not the leaders of the party. The, part, the problem is mm. the, um, the members of Knesset in each party. No, I think that's right. And, and Herzog, for example, uh, in the last few days when he was asked whether he would sit in a unity government, refused to answer. He, he refused to answer because he didn't want to encourage people uh, pressing him for that. No, he did well, he say that he would invite point, Likud yes, to be in his national He uh, did, he Let's, did. It may not work out <laughs> quite that way. We may end up with a rotation, but it was not the rotation Herzog envisioned when he first announced his, his partnership with Sipi Livni. Uh, my gut feeling is that this is, that there's going to be more, there's going to, again, you never want to predict, um, but since I'm a teacher, and this is not my profession, therefore my false predictions um, aren't going to affect. We, we my won't career, hold them. Up. Aren't going to affect my career. Um, <laughs> uh, this looks more to me like another that there's going to be a need for another election because I cannot. An another election. I don't think that out of this, when you actually break down not just the parties but the people who sit in the parties, neither government could be formed. I don't see a national unity government. Uh, maybe Likud, Zionist Union, um, Kulanu, and uh, Yeshatid. In theory, possible. That's your government. That's, that's your government, but I, the people themselves. In, other, there's, in each party, there are individuals who um, uh, would be profoundly, profoundly challenged. And, uh, um, well, um, but just to explain and, for some folks who may not know the intricacies of our functional yet complicated electoral system, what do you mean by, and you say there may need to be a new election. I mean, we just had an election uh, two years ago. We had an election today. The way it do works we really is like want this. another one? No, no, it's whether we want another one or not. The way it works is the president gives you 21, it, uh, picks somebody, and it gives them 21 days. Um, if they don't succeed, they get another 21 days. Um, if they don't succeed, then the president gives somebody else that option. Um, and they get 21 days. So that's 62 months. That's two three months, months altogether. I think, yes, two days, months, 63 correct. days, two Six, months. Two months. And, and then... And then you have another election. And, another election in two months. And then months. you would probably get the exact same results. <laughs> <laughs> so then what? <laughs> and then, this is, this is, in many ways, the challenge is, is Israeli society um, uh, going to wake up to the fact that um, we are not, the, that, that we're, neither side really is able to lead this country. Mm. And that will require a serious maturation on their part. I really wished for another number, for other numbers, but but Ben, it's also saying to me, Daniel, wake up. Um, everybody has a fantasy that the other one is going to disappear, and part of what we're going to have to do is change our rhetoric. Like, for example, when a Likud party runs on the notion that the Zionist Union aren't Zionists, when part of this conversation is who's really a Zionist, who loves the Jewishness of Israel, who cares about Israel. Like some of that, already, we're going to have to, um, maybe it's going to take another election <laughs> for us to finally, or our society to grow up and to realize that uh, um, we have to talk differently about each other and with each other so that we could actually govern together. You can't govern together when you speak about each other in these terms. Yes. You can't. That's right. Uh, sticks and stones, you know, I say this over, all, over and over again. We always, we grow up on sticks and stones will break our bones, but words will never harm me. That is not what Judaism teaches us, and that's not what any of us experience. Words harm us. And we are creating walls of words around ourselves. And, uh, um, and I think Likud, if it wants to rule, is going to have to separate and distinguish itself from Bayit Um And... Uh, um, 
and, 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 and the type of rhetoric um, that's, that, that, we, that we use towards each other today is just is too hurtful and harmful to afterwards pretend as if we could actually govern. So it really, this rhetoric is, we cannot just discount it now and start from a clean slate. There is pain, there is hurt, there is damage that's been done in relationships. If that's the case, how do they go to the next stage? Do they sit down together? Can they actually put their arms around each other or at least sit in the same room together and work something out? Or is it so damaged and is that, and what does that say about the, the society we're in today? The, yes. the, the rhetoric here was more personal That's right. in a sense than ideological. That's right. And uh, the, the rhetoric in the past was ideologically brutal. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've, we've matured in that sense. And instead we've, we've, we've sublimated or we've directed all of that, that, that animosity in, in, in this deep personal, in personal way. And, um, and I, I agree with Danielle, this, this, this has consequences. It's not simply, can't simply be swept up. But you know, if you, if you think about the, the, the really nasty rhetoric, it's us or him. Uh, it's the Likud or them. What is the Israeli public saying? It's both of you. <laughs> we don't like either of you necessarily. You're all here. We're but, us. But this is us. It, this, and We're if us. we had yeah. another election, the numbers would more or less yes, resemble this. This is who we are. That so, is absolutely. This so the, is the tribes of Israel. But right. there's, one other, there's one other piece of very good news that, uh, that we haven't mentioned. Yes, yet. let's celebrate together. Yeah, yes. Yes. And, together. And, and, who's and, not yes. thrilled? Who's, who, who did not the, get in? The most yachad. The mo yachad. And, and, for and, we, yachad. and we are we yachad, are yachad. We are on, together. That, together. on that principle. The party yes. which Explain to folks who may not know <laughs> what that Yossi, means. It's please. a brand new party. And, uh, yachad was a merging of the worst instincts <laughs> of Israeli society. The worst instincts. Yes. Uh, racism. Uh, religion. Ultra, ultra orthodoxy coming from the religious Zionist camp and uh, ultra orthodoxy coming from Shas. This was a nightmare coalition of the dark forces of Israeli society. Uh, this, is, this is the party that spoke op with open hatred for the refugees from Africa. The only party that actually made it an issue. Mm -hmm. we, need, we, we need to keep this a pure Jewish society. They spoke uh, negatively about Israeli Arabs. This, oh, is, this is this, a vile, vile, this is the worst of what Judaism produces. This is a party that would feel comfortable on the far right of Europe if they weren't Jews. That's exactly what this party is, and it brought in... And would in, have probably been illegal in Israel in the 1970s. Yes, be exactly right, mm -hmm. because it brought in Baruch Marzel, who is the uh, disciple and heir to Meir Kahana. So it was Eli Yishai of Shas joining mm -hmm. together with what we call the Chardal, certain Chardal elements, ultra-Orthodox elements within the settler movement, and uh, it was... It, this was my nightmare was seeing these people in so the Knesset. Let's say something let's positive. Celebrate. Let's say yeah. but let's say something else something I think we're very saying many I, positive. Let, things. let me say something else really positive. <laughs> my greatest nightmare was not just Yachad coming in, was the ability of the Likud and Bait Yehudi to form a far right wing coalition. Exactly. Um, and, exactly. and when you break down the individuals within the Kulanu party, um, you realize that that, that will not happen. Mm -hmm. The far left, I might personally have been a little more comfortable with, with it, will also not happen. And now, in a tradition which says, um, when, one, when two people find a garment, this one says, ah. I found it first. The and this one says, the I found it first. And this one says, no, it's all mine. I own Zionism. And this one says, no, 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 I own Zionism. I'm Israel. I'm its future. The rabbis at some point say, they used to say early on in the tradition, they say, fight it out. The rabbis nixed that <laughs> idea. Um, they nixed it and they said, you know what you have to do? When you reach that reality, you have to divide it. And right now, um, the great challenge is for Zionist um, Likud, Zionist Union, Yeshatid, Kulanu, and maybe one other party. And I personally, here Yossi and I disagree a little bit because I believe that the Haredi party will change the most when they're not disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. when they're dis I think Haredim, when maybe. you disenfranchise maybe. them, it's like the czars of Russia. Maybe. Then it becomes ideological. And one Haredi party joins and cares and they feel franchised. There you have an Israeli society, a large coalition 
um, where you don't have one party such as Yesh Atid, who, uh, who has to carry everything on its own. You have Yesh Atid with Kulanu together. Maybe. Um, wasn't what I was hoping for, but uh, Yachloku. Um, um, there, 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 there is hope. There is hope here. Um, the nightmare scenario has been prevented um, uh, from my perspective. There is hope here. No. It'll be interesting to see whether, whether our society um, could embrace um, uh, this new reality. We have, we have far more questions from our uh, audience uh, watching online and on cable TV than we can get to. I'm going to apologize in advance for not getting to them. But while I look for one or two really good ones that represent a lot of the questions, I'd like you just to take a minute to talk about the uh, 13 seats of the United Arab Party or the four or three or four parties that joined together. Is there any, does it, what does this say about the size and the uh, willingness of the uh, Arab-Israeli, uh, Palestinian-Israeli uh, community to participate? And is there a chance that some of this group may integrate more even in, uh, if, if not as a unit, if some of them in a, some kind of a unity government? Um, Daniel Yossi, whoever, and then I will we'll come to some see, audience I questions. I don't see the results here as, um, they won't join. as being, first of all, as, as, as pointing to a, uh, a breakthrough. Mm. These numbers, they're not high enough. Had they gotten 15 seats, Correct. and that was the, the projection toward the end, uh, that would have been the moment when I think they would have not been able to disband, to go back to being separate parties. I don't think this experiment was successful enough, and the enmities that exist within Arab politics, which are, if anything, as, as deep as the enmities within Jewish politics, uh, this, this list uh, won't hold. And I think that's good news, because what, what worried me about this list was that it gave implicit veto power to, uh, to the nationalists and the Islamists. What we need as a result of this very interesting experiment in trying to become part of a, a, a political force to reckon with, now we need to see the emergence of a genuine uh, integrationist party, or a another party, possibility, a party one, that people one, like us could feel comfortable. Or, or another one, one possibility. Second, Daniel, yes, I, I, I just want to uh, uh, say thank you to the JBS TV audience uh, watching on cable. They're going to go uh, to their own programming now. If you want to stay with the Hartman uh, program, and you can see Daniel and Yossi have barely begun <laughs> to get going. Um, you can watch the program on our website and on many other websites. Uh, but if you're leaving us from the cable, I want to thank you very much for being with us our friends and partners at JBS TV. Uh, thank you very much. Let's go back to this question of the Arabs and then I will have I a question one from of the, the audience thing, finally. One of the things that, um, uh, if I was a member of the Zionist Union um, leadership, um, one of the things that comes clearly from this election is that if I ever want to lead this country, I have to start allocating real significant numbers of seats um, to compete for the Arab vote. Mm. Um, that if you, that the, I agree with Yossi that in this constellation, they're, they, regard, they, they're, they're not going to join, or they're not going to be part of. And they won't uh, be, they won't be welcomed. They, they won't be, they won't be welcomed yeah. either way. Um, but um, <clears throat> the center left, left, is going to have to start campaigning and recognizing that, um, that the Arab, that the Israeli Arabs are Israelis and that there are many who want to be part of Israeli society. And um, we have to fight for their loyalty and to separate them from parties which frankly don't keep them on a constant basis on the fringe of Israeli society. Maybe that will be a, uh, a lesson for the future, but, but it's not going to change um, um, during this next government. Uh, I'd like to turn to a question now from Rabbi Nina Perlmutter, Temple Hechel uh, Ba'oranim, and she writes that after this painful election and year, what are the best first steps to take toward healing? You started mentioning this a little bit, uh, whether the two uh, center, the two large parties can actually sit together. Uh, between Jews and non-Jews in Israel, between Israeli Jews and American Jews, etc., are we at a point, do the results suggest, and are we at a point where there in fact can be some healing, and if so, how do we get there? I'd say the starting point is uh, recognition that Israeli society is far less divided, at least along the old fault lines, than, uh, than the rhetoric of the last uh, election would have, would have led on. And, um, 
and what my hope is that, that the first step will be for Netanyahu and Herzog to seclude themselves. Maybe with Rivlin and a therapist. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, and to really begin uh, the process of seeing who belongs to the center. Because, and, and you know, I, 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 I'm really mulling over what you said earlier, Daniel, about uh, the problem being with some of the backbenchers. There are people in the Likud who do not belong in the Likud. They belong in Abayit Ayudi. And there are people in labor who don't belong in Herzog's labor. Sure. Professor Yona, these are people who belong That's in correct. merits and even further left. Mm. And I'm That's hoping correct. there's going to be a sifting out and, and let's see a little bit of attrition, necessary attrition. Maybe, maybe Chotoveli uh, will, uh, will move over to Bayit and Yona will move over to Meretz. The numbers are going to, th there will be a shakeup. There mm. are those in both of the major parties who will not be able to sit with each other. And therefore, they, they need to go. Well, here's a question sent in um, uh, from Jesse Pikin in New York. He talks about how, uh, if, if Netanyahu becomes prime minister again, even uh, in a rotation perhaps, um, in the wake of the damage or the uh, impact on American-Israeli relations and with the uh, current uh, U.S. administration, um, how will they, how will that uh, administration see the Israeli electorate now when chances are Netanyahu will be at least half of the prime minister uh, team and, and, and it isn't as if they got rid of him the way some people suggest and, and there still needs to be a relationship and healing there between the so, U.S. And, and Israel. See, if, if the bottom line is, is that I don't, you know, we're, Politicians are politicians, countries are countries. I don't think that the major problem is with Netanyahu, but more with the policies themselves. Um, if a far-right government now becomes impossible, and you have a Likud, Zionist Union, Yeshatid, Kulanu based party, based government, excuse me, I think um, right now the, uh, the administration um, could feel very, very comfortable. And I also would suggest that American Jewry um, I believe that my nightmare coalition was also a nightmare coalition for American Jewry. Mm -hmm. I think it was a coalition, it was an Israel that American Jewry could not stand behind um, um, in the long run because it represented a Judaism that was antithetical to all of their values. Um, but I think um, these four parties as a core basis provides both ideology, um, numerous members of Knesset, with a very heightened level of sensitivity. And if we add what, Yo what Yossi said, it, um, where there might be some attrition, I think it will, uh, um, um, there, is, there is hope. Um, and uh, both, the bottom line is, as I'm digesting this more and more, um, there is something possibly very exciting um, that could emerge here. Um, and we'll see. We have a question from Dove Gartenberg, and uh, it's about the unity government because, and something we all discussed a few minutes ago, which is Netanyahu's apparent repudiation of his acceptance of a two-state solution with the Palestinian Authority. Um, can he walk that back? Can Labor sit with a Netanyahu who has, in the last-minute electioneering, seeking to shore up the hard right of his base, essentially repudiated that? Can he walk that back? Can uh, Herzog find a way to bring, that, bring him into that? And that, is that going to be perhaps the deal that won't will crash a attention unity Netanyahu government? Netanyahu could, um, um, could explain in the old Jewish tradition that what he meant by that there will not be a one-state solution, that there will not be a, a Palestinian state, what he meant by was give, if the circumstances remain exactly the same. <laughs> and that... Um, that's what I mean, that in theory I'm for a two-state solution, but I'm against a one-state solution, uh, I'm, I'm against a, a, um, a two-state solution right now, given the current reality, and then he'll speak about Daesh and all a bunch of Anchamat, but if things change, Netanyahu is, is very, very pragmatic. The, the, it's, it's Netanyahu together with, when he's competing with Bayit Yehudi, and when his core constituency is far, is far, is is, is center to far to to right, um, then it's not in his interest. Um, but in this coalition, I think such there we will all have to be far more elastic about our our 
dead set commitments than we were in the past. And I think that's the, the consequence to govern now is just going to simply require that, not just of Netanyahu. It's going to require it of the Zionist Union. It's going to require it of Yeshati. It's going to require it of Kulanu, of all of us. You know, I'm, I'm just looking at the numbers again. And it's so clear to me that the linchpin of this election is Kulanu. Really? Because if Kulanu moves more on its right instincts, then it could go into the narrow right-wing government that uh, that, that it, would lose three right of its, it would lose three of its members yeah, of Knesset, it, and then it would be at 60 again. Right. Well, is, is there a well, chance that is, people we is, know, such as Rachel Azaria, who's been affiliated with the Institute, I don't think, would sit in a government you know, like I that? I don't think that the three uh, members of, uh, of Kulanu that Daniel is, is speaking about would agree. Uh, nevertheless, Kulanu is the, is, is the linchpin. There will be tonight, the first call Netanyahu is going to make will be to, to Kahlon. That's, that's for sure. Not to Herzog. No, it's going to be to Kahlon. Netanyahu will try to avert a unity government. Mm. And, uh, and Kahlon and his team will be, sit, will be sitting through the night because Netanyahu is going to offer them the world. Not to keep them in what would be what avoiding a unity government. He will, he will offer them uh, not only what, what, what the minimal demands of Kulano is, which is uh, finance ministry, but uh, he may well offer them another senior uh, cabinet post in order to entice them. It's going to be... The I agree that his first call Kulano. will be to Kulano, and then you look, will Yisrael Beitenu sit with Shas and United Torah Judaism given their constituency? Mm -hmm. I don't, it's, um, I, I think he will make that call, but I don't believe at the end of the day that Kulanu is the linchpin, mm, um, because okay. I really believe there is no linchpin. Um, Kulanu he's gonna make won't the call. go in. I don't believe Kulanu they'll is go not, in. They're not gonna, they're no. gonna dis, they're, they, it's the end of their, this, yeah. neither, we, whoever he call first doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's who's gonna, you're gonna have to start sitting with. And um, that's gonna be very, very interesting. And we're, these numbers might change one or two seats, and a one or two seat change could make here a very, very big yeah. difference. On, yeah. a, on a purely tactical basis, one or two seats could actually change the f likelihood could, of either side forming a government. No. Um, it, it, no, it, it, it could mitigate the some of the, the Kulanu. The left can't, uh -huh, but, the left can't. But it could mitigate the three people on Kulanu, but it might not be able to mitigate some of the Israel Beitenu, who mm -hmm. I can't sit, see them, Shas and United Torah Judaism know that Likud needs them to enter a coalition. That means they're going to be, they have 13 seats. Um, could Yisrael Beitenu accept uh. um, 13 seats of a Haredi party and the power that that comes with, given the fact that his core constituency um, there is, is so far away from, uh, um, from, uh, um, from the ideology and the platform of these parties? Um, it's just not going to happen. It, it does seem that the, the fact that the two major parties received so many more seats than had been projected, that the public is in fact requiring, asking for, on certain things we want uh, the uh, Zionist Union, the labor approach to social issues, and uh, many, many people have said to me as well on, on, on security issues, there really isn't anybody we trust in some ways more than Netanyahu. And I, that, I think the move to the larger parties is an attempt of Israelis to prevent a national unity government. To prevent the national yes. unity yes. government. I think it's, it's, ah, so the opposite. Yes. Oh, it's exactly the opposite. Okay. I think that's if right. you wanted a that's national right. unity government, you would have gone with the small. I think each one went, went back party. to their major party so that their party would have a chance to put together the coalition, but they weren't able to knock out the 21 seats in the center in the center mm. they weren't able to knock those out and as a result mm. not enough left still stayed and therefore um, the possibility of each of either party forming a coalition um, is yeah just not I mean there. look what what these very high numbers uh, show and and these are these numbers and uh, we should we should say this to the audience these numbers uh, for for Likud and uh, the Zionist Union uh, labor are uh, are far higher than even the most optimistic polls yes. gave to either of them. They didn't even announce yeah. 
who was their 26th member of Knesset. Right. When they right. came out, he was like, they right. only announced their first 25 <laughs> seats. That's so we don't even know who that is. We don't yes. even know who 26 yes. is. It wasn't part of their conversation. Yeah, yeah. They, it was, this, this was really, this is a really a shock. And the reason is exactly what Daniil said, is that the, 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 the people who voted for Likud really bought into the Likud slogan, it's us or the, or the defeatist left. And the people who voted for Zionist Union bought into their slogan, it's us or, or four more years of, of the Prince of Darkness. <laughs> and so that's, that's, this was a, a desperate attempt to, uh, to prevent the other from coming to power. And, and certainly the last thing that people who voted for these two blocks thought they were doing is voting for a unity government. So then the kind of uh, dialogue and healing and, and uh, um, that doesn't seem maybe possible yet then. It, if that's the case, then maybe neither, they don't feel, neither Netanyahu nor Herzog will feel compelled but they don't to have form a, a national exactly. government. They don't, they don't feel compelled. They right. actually don't want to. And I think Israelis don't want, I don't, I don't, I never mm. bought into, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm an Israeli and I don't, I never felt that Israelis want national unity governments. They want national unity governments when there's acute problems of external crisis um, where we have to get together. Um, for the short term, for like the a short crisis, term, I don't I feel that that's where I think we're we're too tribal to be national unity people, um, and um, I don't think that's what Israelis want. Um, but the reality is, is that we are a divided society, um, and um, in with in this constellation, um, there is no other choice. And look, this is a coerced unity. It's a joyless unity, <laughs> but that's the result. That that's the inner logic of uh, of Israeli politics, and I think of. Of, uh, of, of our reality. No, I'm going to give you both a chance for a, a final word, unless that was your final word, Yossi, and then we'll uh, be signing off. We've been going on for a long time. This conversation certainly is not ending tonight. As you note, the politicians will not get much sleep. Their phones are ringing off the hook. They're trying to figure out what to do. Maybe their own internal polls showed them this would happen. They already have a strategy. My guess is many of them are now scrambling. Is there uh, something that we can something positive, something hopeful, besides the fact that uh, at the very least on the downside, a certain party you didn't want has Let's not just, made the Last the night cut. I couldn't sleep. Tonight I could go to sleep. That's a good thing. <laughs> I Tonight I could go thing. to sleep, not just yes. because it's going to take a very long time, but because I would say, Yossi, our disagreement, both of us had a night premiere scenario which was different than the others. Yes. Um, and. Uh, for both of us, that night, nightmare scenario has been avoided. Um, and now, um, we as a people, um, are, we're faced with, we're, we, throughout our history, we've been faced with great challenges. And the history of the Jewish people is that we've risen to, the, to, to meet them. I think there's some very critical issues facing Israeli society today. Um, there's huge economic gaps um, within the society. There's a huge number of Israelis who believe that they cannot afford to live here. Um, there is a security need for Israel to engage in some form of peace conversation. Um, there is a need for Israel to heal its relationship with the world. Um, there's a need for Israel to heal its relationship, uh, for Israelis to heal their relationship with each other. And um, either extreme would not have healed all of these issues. Um, and now we actually have a chance um, to put forth a government which could do so. Um, um, being the rabbi, my bracha to everybody is that, um, our, that our prayers for, for leaders who have wisdom and courage um, will actually take hold and our leaders will have that wisdom and courage um, to take on some of the major challenges we face. There is a chance to form a government which will be able to do that. Amen. Um, Yossi gets the last word, but it's a good one. Amen. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for being with us tonight. Of course, uh, Daniil Hartman, Yossi Klein Alevi, two uh, here at the Hartman Institute. These conversations will continue. Uh, join us and participate with us in future programs, both online and uh, in person, both in Israel and in throughout North America. Uh, if you like this program, please tell us, uh, and we'll try and come up with some other subjects to do. Uh, I want to thank you both for your time. It's late here, by the way. It's uh, close to 
It's uh, close to 11 o'clock Israel time. Uh, for those of you around the world, it's very different times. But we want to thank you for being with us for this extended uh, program. And uh, from Jerusalem, from the Shalom Hartman Institute, good night.